Hello and welcome to Dateline Lagos on Channels Television. I'm Ayo Tunde Balugum. On the program, Governor Sawalu launches security equipment for police, commissions Ijede Road in Ikurudu, and promises to invest in the technology sector. The Lagos State Government has taken a bold step towards tightening loose ends by rolling out crime-fighting equipment meant for the police in the state. And the President was in Lagos for the commissioning. The helicopter conveying President Muhammad Buhari lands at the Lagos State Police Command in Ikeja. We welcome the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. This is the President's first visit to Lagos since Governor Babajide Sonwulu assumed office in 2019 and he's here to launch equipment for security agencies in the state. It's all in line with the governor's plans to design and maintain adequate security apparatus for the state and the country by extension. We have always been a strong believer in the principle of government working together for the benefit of its people. Security is one such area that requires active and continuing collaboration across all tiers of government. Lagos State is very proud to have pioneered the establishment of the Lagos State Security Trust Fund a model that has since gone on to be replicated in several other states in our country. The idea of a security trust fund is simply to mobilize private sector financing and support to equip our law enforcement and security agencies in terms of equipment, logistics, and welfare. In the almost 14 years since it was established, the fund has committed substantial resources to making Lagos the safest, most secure, and most prosperous commercial location in the whole of Africa. Today, Mr. President, we're handing over the following brand new crime fighting equipment to the Lagos Police Command and other security operatives. We're handing over this equipment as our own way of assisting both the Nigerian police force to rebuild the violence and the, and the destruction that followed the unfortunate instance that we saw last October. As you know, Police personnel and infrastructure were significantly impacted by this incident. Since then, the state has been feeling the negative effects, a rising wave of criminal activity by persons who clearly seeking to take advantage of our seemingly vulnerability. Your Excellency, Mr. President, distinguished guests, no society can survive without a motivated and well-equipped police force. Hoodlums and criminals know this hence the relentless attack on police installations nationwide. It is our responsibility as a government to ensure that their inferior aims are not achieved. They seek to demoralize us and destabilize the police and other law enforcement agents. But we will continue to boldly proclaim, not on our own watch will this happen. We're determined to provide to police all the support they require by way of additional equipment and logistics. We will also ensure we continue to salute and celebrate the courage and the dedication of our police officers who, in the face of many challenges, daily put their lives on the line to secure our streets, our neighborhood, and our various communities. For the Inspector General of Police, the efforts of the state government deserves commendation and he asked men of the police force in Lagos to utilize the tools and equipment and do away with all security threats in the state before any further escalation. I want to sincerely thank the government and people of Lagos State, especially the security conscious governor, Mr. Babajide Olushola Sangolu, for his game-changing and historic donations. The donation which covers important security and policing equipment is coming at the right time and well certainly when the police and other security agencies need help. The state government has continued to provide unique and innovative models for funding and supporting security operations in the state. It is our hope that other state governments will key into some of these initiatives. I am particularly grateful to the President and Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, a man of uncommon vision and fashion, for personally coming to witness and give his fatherly blessing to this event. 
I want to assure Mr. President, as well as the Governor, and all the people of Lagos State, that the MPF and other beneficiaries of this donation, of these equipments and tools, will be put into judicious use, effectively and efficiently, in advancing the collective safety of Lagosians and Nigerians in general. President Muhammadu Buhari challenges other state governors to follow the path of the Lagos state government as it pledges to tackle the security challenges facing the country. I acknowledge the initiative taken to kickstart the rebuilding process through the establishment of the Lagos State Rebuild Trust Fund and through this very laudable effort by the Lagos State Security Trust Fund. I enjoin other state governments to emulate your bold, proactive, and resourceful initiative. The federal government takes very seriously our constitutional oath to secure the lives and properties of the Nigerian people. We are well aware of the fact that lasting security is a necessary foundation for business, investment, and true prosperity. This is why we have demonstrated and continue to demonstrate our commitment to comprehensive police reform in Nigeria. Indeed, no federal government since 1999 has been as committed as our administration to reforming and the repositioning of the police force and the national policing architecture. My primary responsibility remains the security of the country and the safety of all citizens. Despite the many challenges we are facing, I want Nigerians to rest assured that we will secure this country. We will secure our infrastructure, our highways, our communities, and our forests, and we will secure the lives of our people. Next, he proceeds to commission the security assets of the Nigerian police force. Lagos State donated a total of 150 double cabin vehicles, 30 salon patrol vehicles, 1,000 ballistic vests, 1,000 ballistic helmets, 1,000 handheld police radios walkie-talkies, 100 security patrol bikes, two armored personnel carriers, four high-capacity troop carriers, two anti-riot water cannon vehicles. The office command furniture and other ancillary support resources have been delivered to boost the morale of security agencies across Lagos State. Dear Lagosians, the second wave of the deadly coronavirus pandemic is here. Its new strain is easily transmitted and deadlier. Coronavirus symptoms are fever, dry cough, tiredness, difficulty in breathing. We can all prevent the spread of this virus through appropriate and regular use of face masks, avoiding close contact with people who are at high risk, washing our hands regularly with soap and running water, especially after visiting the toilet, before eating, and after coughing or sneezing, using alcohol-based hand sanitizer, maintaining at least one and a half meters or five feet distance from anyone coughing or sneezing, covering our mouths with tissue while coughing or sneezing and thrashing the tissue. If you feel unwell and show symptoms of coronavirus or you notice anyone who does, please call the Lagos State Emergency Hotlines 08000 ECOMED or 0803-3356-5529. Many are dead. Don't fall victim or die in ignorance. Report now. Together, we will overcome this challenge. Igwegai Puleko, Ajumoshini, Lagos State Government. Announcer. Governor Babajide Sanwolu has delivered a six-kilometer road project in the Jede area of Ikorodu, where he compensated some 454 property owners affected by road construction also in Ikorodu. Take a look. Ikorodu is one of the largest towns in Lagos, located in the northeast of the state. 
With a population of over 1 million people, Ikorodu shares a boundary with Shagamu in Ogun State. Being a large town, Ikorodu requires major road connectivity, linking various communities. The Lagos State Government is aware of the road challenge in Ikorodu, and so in December 2019, Governor Babajide Sonwolu flagged off the rehabilitation of Ijede Road from a single to dual carriageway extending from Itamaga, Iwelekbe, to Ijede Town, cutting across four local councils and 37 communities. The first phase of the road covers 6.5 kilometers from Itamaga to Iwelekbe Town, and the project is now delivered by the state government. Governor Sonwolu and his deputy are here to officially hand over the road to the people of Ijede and his environs. The ministry who oversees all road projects in the state is headed by engineer Ramide Adiyoye and she gives a breakdown of the projects. The event we are witnessing today is an affirmation of, of Mr. Governor to resolve to resolve this administration's extended development progress across the entire length and breadth of the state and grow the economy of Lagos through a robust infrastructure portfolio. The overall target of the current administration is that investments in modern road infrastructure will improve travel time, will ease movement of goods and services, and yield multiple developments on Lagos and its residents. In upgrading this road, we, look, we took cognizance of the need to make commuting stress-free for pedestrians and motorists by making provision for dual carriageways walkways, service docks, drainage culverts, street lights and laybys with, together with bus stops. The road being commissioned today is very strategic in the sense that because of its connectivity to at least 37 communities within this axis and other neighboring ones, and because it provides a good access to Berry Bay, the Agura town, and eventually to the, it will eventually get to the rice mill where we have had a lot chunk of our investments in there, and as well as the general jetty for connectivity to water transportation. We are optimistic that the rehabilitation and upgrading of the road into a dual carriageway will improve connectivity, it will improve traffic flow, reduce traffic time, enhance intermodal transport system, improve safety of lives and property. It will also en enhance property values and improve socioeconomic well-being of the people. Governor Sonwolu assures the people of completing all other ongoing projects in Ikorodu and also hands over compensation checks of varying amounts to 454 property owners, including the Nollywood actor Babatunde Omidino, popularly called Babasube, affected by the rehabilitation of Igbogbo Igbe, Agri Kishawa, and Obase Kumade Road, with a total of 500 million naira. Exactly 18 months ago, in December, January of 2019, 2019, December, January 2020, we handed over this site to Mesa's Arab contractor. At that event, we promised that in 18 months, you've seen the speech, in 18 months, we said we'll hand over this road back to our citizens. Ladies and gentlemen, we've done it in 17 months. In fact, we could have commissioned this thing in 16 months. I think what Arab contractors, Ministry of Works and Infrastructure, and all of you that have played a prominent role, you have kept to the promise, you have kept to our commitment, you have delivered this project ahead of schedule. When we gave it to you, we didn't even know that pandemic was going to happen. We didn't know that the coronavirus last year was going to ravage the country. But even in the thick and thin of it, you kept promise. We kept faith with our citizens. The day we went to Igbogbo, and I passed on the road that we're doing there, the Igbogbo Bayeku or the Ahmed Bolatinubu Igbogbo Road. Work is going on on that road, but there were so many plugs that came out and said that we're owing compensation. And I did promise, and I said that the next time we're coming to Ikorodu, we will come with a bag of checks to hand over to the citizens. I'm happy to announce that we'll be paying almost 500 million naira today as compensation to various religious bodies, to schools, to individuals that are on the Gogo Ahmed Balatinubu Road that we're also doing, that construction is going on there. This again is another promise made. 
Ladies and gentlemen, not only are we bequeathing a road infrastructure to the people of Ikurudu, we are even more determined to ensure that we do the most honorable thing, which is why we're also handing over checks to various property owners and to people that have that we need to compensate for various demolition that we had on the other road. As you are all aware, this is not the Holy Road project we are doing in Ikorodu. We are currently working on Agrik Ishawo Road. We are working on Igbogbo Bolatinumbu Road. We are working on Obasekumade Road. We are going to start the work at the Ikorodu Lagos roundabout. We are going to start demolition and the reconstruction of that entire corridor to be able to receive better traffic, to be able to have a better journey time, and for all of our buses, the BRT buses and the first and last five buses that we want to hand over and let them be plying the Kurudu so that they will have a better headroom to be able to work. Residents express their gratitude to the state government. We believe with this, the connectivity of people moving, moving around this place will be seamless. It will be seamless because we will have this route to get to that place, and it is a, one of the points of uh, your team's agenda. And that is why we are happy with you. We want to tell you that we are with you. We are happy with what you are doing. And uh, let me say it categorically that this road is going to serve four local government, four SCDA, and one and three SCDA, and one local government. It will be local government, it will be a road, it will go by and come and enjoy them. You can see the right side is for uh, a center, while the left side is for a uh, Ibogbo and uh, Ijede. So to start with my brothers who are going well. Imota is there. We will have a very big rice plain. And uh, this road is a major road that will link them. The road project has started from Otano to Itanaga. The new BRF regime veered a bit into Ijede Road. And the question in the mouth of so many people then was when will it be taken from Itanaga, from Itanaga to Ijede? Today, the road from Internet to Ijede is being accomplished due to a certain extent. We believe that you are a man of your words, very functional, very responsive, and you have been doing us proud. So we can say that we are proud citizens of Lagos State because we have a functional government led by your very self and assisted by your deputy. You are not only giving us infrastructure, you are also contributing to the economic upliftment of Ikorodu Division. He also makes his way to the newly constructed sectariat for Ijede Local Council Development Area, where he dropped some cherry news for the people. You've asked that we should give you a fire service. It's been approved. We'll give you a fire service. You've asked that we should give you an area command. We'll give you an area command. We're also going to complete the Ijede jetty and terminal that we're building is ongoing. We'll make sure that we'll complete it very, very soon. The hospital that you have in Nigeria, we'll go in there and we'll see if there are one or two things that we need to upgrade and improve upon, we'll go there and do it for you. The Lagos State Government says it will continue to provide sustainable road infrastructure across the state. And the Lagos State Government says it's determined to invest in the technology sector, which will ultimately lead to expansion of the tech space by making Lagos not just a smart city, but the 21st century economy as well. Lagos, the center of excellence, is passionate about the growth and development of startups and entrepreneurs. And this is the reason the government is grooming techpreneurs to become global challengers, helping to boost the state's economy. Eco Innovation Center is one of the leading hubs in Lagos where young entrepreneurs are trained. The center also supports businesses leveraging innovation and technology. <laughs> Governor Babajide Somolu is visiting the center to meet the recently trained girls, the Tech Boot Camp. It's time to keep encouraging the girl child to take up careers in tech, either as programmers or in related fields. Find the doctor near you, you'll be able to win. An instant clinic, just one clinic, you'll be able to see every clinic and hospital in Lagos State. 
The brain behind the Africa Agility explains why girls are the focus of the training. One of the biggest problems that the world is trying to solve is the underrepresentation of women in technology. As you can see, here is the gender gap in the world. This is the ratio of male to female in technology. 5% female and 75% male. And when you look at those 25% female, only 3% are black African American women. And where is Lagos State? Lagos State versus the world is 0.00%. We have pool of mentors from all over the world that will take these girls through the journey that will help them to become masters in their craft. And we assign them on a ratio of one to five. Then they design an agreement with the mentors. Okay, this is really areas where I want to develop my skills. And they will come up with a project. And the mentorship is hands-on um, practical project. Then at the end of the mentorship program, after 90 days, we do an assessment to see if they have actually improved in their skill set. And this is the ambassadorial circle. We also have some of the people that went through last year boot camp. They are already tutors. They are paying it forward to develop and help other girls in Lagos. We want you to partner with us so that we can scale up, so that we can achieve the goal of educating 10,000 girls. Sir, you are creating a movement in the world. This is a big challenge. And any leader that is helping girls to, to, to get access to education is the best leader in the world. Olushala Sonwolu, a man that walks the talk with the money. Governor Sonwolu announces the no state's pressure, plan sir. to expand the tax base. Um, we don't want to sit in our offices and think that we know it or we have an idea of what is happening. We want to come down here and sort of like have a feel of what is going on and see how we can collaborate and develop this space very well. This is the future. And it's a future in all spheres, you know. And as a government, we cannot be left out, you know. As a people, we cannot be left out. Technology gives us that opportunity to leapfrog, you know. So it, it helps you to leapfrog so that indeed you can be, you know, um, in the room with everybody and anybody and be able to recreate whatever you see as your future. And so we want to continue to do that. Um, as a government, what are we doing directly? There are investors that, are, that, can, that we can match make you with and they can listen you know, to you. So what we're doing is we're looking still at the, the young ladies and the young girls like Anu is training downstairs and we're granting some of them. Thank you so very much for your support. Thank you, Mr. Akib, for your support. Right? And we're granting them you know, um, vouchers. We're actually giving them the, the Lagos... Um, Lagos State Innovation and Research Council last year gave out over 250 million, you know, to different um, tech startups, right? And some of them uh, have turned into patent now. We're happy that, you know, some are actually advancing forward and they are still monitoring others. This year they're still going to do um, similar numbers or even a lot more. We're in this together, you know. Uh, we, have, we, have, we have seen you know, um, this space as a place that we need to continue to work with you. We need to continue to create, you know, um, that, that business-friendly environment, you know, for each and every one of you so that you can indeed do all the great things that you're doing, you know, so that we can jointly, we can jointly create, you know, um, a more enduring, you know, mutually beneficial uh, business environment that will work for all of us and that will create, you know, that innovation and that innovative minds that we're all trying to build um, together. We're actually building the architecture, as you will see, you know, the infrastructure that will be the backbone for tech. Um, so we're doing 3,000 kilometers of fiber ducts, you know, in Lagos. Um, they've completed about 1,800. So the ducts are going to all have fiber for us and also for the telcos. Right, all of them are working with us in this area. And so we want to make it a one-stop shop. We're also aware that in the course of the year, before next year, there are also two submarines that are also landing in Lagos. That also <laughs> competes with the ones that we have and will still bring down total cost, right? It's all about bringing down the cost and making sure that businesses can be very competitive. With the world increasingly settling into post-digital era, the Lagos State Government says it will not be left behind in equipping the next generation with digital skills 
that will make Lagos a 21st century economy. Lagosians, we are recording more cases of the deadly COVID-19 pandemic every day. The second wave is spreading like wildfire in our communities. It is deadlier, spreads faster, and kills faster. Our isolation centers are getting filled up, and more patients are on oxygen. More people are dying, and the young ones are not left out. You don't need to die in ignorance or arrogance and foolishness. Observe all the precautions. Wash your hands regularly with soap and water. If you don't have access to water and soap, please use an alcohol-based sanitizer. Use your face mask properly and regularly. If you have to go out or be in public, avoid light crowds. Observe social distance always. Do not org. If it's not important, stay at home. Most common symptoms include fever, dry cough or tiredness, aches and pains, sore throat, loss of taste or smell. Serious symptoms include shortness of breath, chest pain or loss of speech. Should you have any of these symptoms or know someone who does, please call the 24-7 Ecotelimed toll-free line on 0800-035-6633. We must take responsibility for our health and lives. We must fight coronavirus by being responsible please observe all precautions the second wave of coronavirus is killing faster than you can imagine stay safe be responsible don't waste your life Lagos State Government announcer that's the program for this week thank you so much for watching I'm Ayotunde Balogun until next time please stay safe